Well, hello, folks. Here we are, December 5th, 23 degrees this morning. And I needed to move some round bales. And guess what? The hydraulics were hideous. It took 10 or 15 minutes for them to warm up just so I could get the, um, the rock rake off the ground. And then it wouldn't lift the round bales like it did in the summer. So I let it sit out there and idle for, I don't know, about an hour. And it finally started to work to the point that I could use it. Got a little frustrated. So my, this is the original John Deere filter that was on it. It's actually a JD filter for the hydraulics, the spin on. Had a fire going in the workshop. Let it burn down, had a real nice bed of coals. Took off the O-ring, the gasket, the rubber gasket. Obviously, you wouldn't have that left if uh, you did what I did. And I set this inside the, uh, the wood stove on the coals. My thought was I would burn out all of the paper element and I could just dump it out through this ginormous hole. Yeah, not the case. So, the purpose of this video is not telling you to do this, but um, what I'm going to do, what I've done, partway anyway, is instead of buying a filter bypass, I thought that, because you know what, that changes the dynamics. You're not going to put a filter back on it unless you take it and, and undo what you've done with the bypass. So, my thought was to cook out the, uh, the paper element, shake it out, clean it real good, spin it on and see what happens. But as I said, that's, that's not, it's not that easy. So, all these guts here is what's inside of this filter. And this was like the clown when he does the handkerchief trick and he pulls a hanky out of his sleeve and there's like 3,000 of them. Well, this wire mesh, which I'm guessing is stainless steel, all of this is inside of that filter. The paper element, this is what's left of it after it cooked. It's mostly just dust. There's this spring that thankfully fits out of the hole in the uh, filter. At the bottom, and this was the real nightmare, at the bottom is this plate that's held in by this spring which has this spring in here which I guess is a relief valve that spot welded to this plate. So after I got what was left of the paper element that screen mesh, I pulled this up and I didn't use a lot of tools, but it was a challenge. So I grabbed this, pulled it up through the hole in the filter, this big hole, and again, thankfully that hole is as big as it is. Then I clamped the uh, needle nose right here in the vise and let it hang off the filter like this and I drilled out the spot weld so I could separate this. So I was able to get this piece out, the spring out, and this little plate, I guess you'd call it, retainer, I'm not sure. But prior to that, all of the, uh, the paper element is encased in this and, I, you know, after seeing this, I can't imagine why they plug up. This metal is wrapped from the bottom of the filter to the top, all the way up to here, in, in a circle. And the paper element is behind it. And I'm not sure, but I'm going to look for a cutaway of one of these filters, if I can find one. I will add that to the end of the video so that I can explain better what, what I'm talking about. But um, what I used to get this out was just 
and I had the filter clamped in my vise with some blocks of wood so I didn't distort the shape. That would be bad. So what I used was this big flat tip screwdriver, put it through the hole, caught an edge of it and just hit it with my hand and ripped this, this metal in a couple of places. Then with the needle nose I went in there and I grabbed it and I just spun it sort of like this to wrap it up and I was able to get it out. Yeah, this was by no means an easy process. This piece here is where they join that wire screen that I just showed you together. But once you tear it apart, it, it does obviously fit through the hole. And then the bottom piece, this sits all the way on the bottom and basically takes up the entire circumference of this filter. So what I did is, again using the needle nose with the filter in the vise, I pulled this up as high as I could get it to the hole and I used these uh, Weiss metal snips to, um, to get through and cut that like this in, into a couple of different pieces so that I could get it out through the hole. I didn't want anything left in here obviously and my initial naive thought was these these holes here are part of the filter and I thought that once I cook this I could just and these holes that go through this plate here are mine I drilled all these I thought once this all turned to dust the paper element I could just shake it out but again that was wishful thinking so, and I, I don't really care that those holes are there. This thing is just going to pass fluid without restriction now. So, I'm going to clean it up. Probably throw a coat of paint on it so it doesn't look too um, hillbilly. And, yeah, I'm going to change the filter that's on there with this. And the reason that I even went this far is because the biggest improvement that I found dealing with this hydraulics is when I changed this filter with the one that's on it now. That was under 900 hours. I'm at 912 and some change right now. I'm using the uh, the Firestar fluid and I did check it. It's full. There's no moisture, no milky. It looks clear as water without the water. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm determined to get this squared away. So, I just wanted to tell you guys what I've been up to with this. All is not well today. But hopefully after this, we're going to be good to go. And I don't know, I'm deciding what color to paint the filter. I might do it orange. Just so, if this works out, I remember. And hopefully I'm not talking too loud or too soft. Ever since I've had COVID, my ears have been plugged up. It's like when you go in the pool, you get water in your ears, that kind of thing. Sometimes if I tilt my head one way or another, everything's fine, but you can't walk around life with your head cocked to the side. People will think you're uh, eccentric. So yeah, anyway, um, hopefully I can find a cut away and explain this a little better. If not, this will be the end of the video, and I will do another video after I got this, after I have this, squared away and installed on the tractor. The fluid's leveled off. It's, again, December 5th. It's going to be cold, so it should be good for uh, test purposes as far as temperature goes. Guys, I know that I've been harping on this um, joystick upgrade. And I'll be quite honest with you, I need to buy some lines and it's just going to be a pain in the neck. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to go about this. I apologize. I thought it would be done by now. And probably the only reason that it's not done is because 
the, the factory stuff is still working, although the tilt is, is getting slower and slower and slower and it's... Anyway, I apologize and I promise that that video is going to be upcoming soon, especially if the original setup fails. Then I'll have no choice because I do need to move uh, round bales to feed the horses a couple of times a week. And with work and the house and... You don't want to hear my excuses, but I do apologize. So, um, yeah, either this is going to be the end of the video, or in a second you're going to see the cutaway with a, a little more explanation as to what my theory is here. All right, everyone, hope you're having a great day. Happy holidays, and we'll talk real soon. Take care.